Mr. President, I am here on the floor this afternoon. Uh, we will uh, very shortly have a vote on the motion to proceed to S-2657. This is the vehicle for our bipartisan American Energy Innovation Act. And I'm here today to kind of kick things off and just let colleagues know some of the highlights of this measure that my colleague and the ranking member on the Energy Committee, uh, Senator Manchin, and I have been working on for some time. And when I say some time, I think those here in the Senate know that when we take up substantive uh, energy bills, whether they're focused on energy or whether they're focused on lands, um, we spend a lot of time giving process, good committee process, to bring these matters to the floor. And the measure that we have in front of us, the American Energy Innovation Act, you'll hear it referred to by its acronym AEIA. It makes you want to do a joke about the vowels, A-E-I-O-U, and sometimes why I can give you that, but I'm not going to today. The, the reality is, is that we have been working on energy reform now for almost a dozen years, 12 years. It's a long time since we have last refreshed and updated our, our energy policies. This act contains priorities from more than 60 members of the Senate. So to suggest that it is a bipartisan bill, um, it, does more, it is more than bipartisan. It is, it is Republican priorities, it is Democrat priorities, it is priorities from urban areas and rural areas. It is, a, it is a package that really does help move the ball forward when we think about energy and energy innovation and energy security. I want to, to extend my thanks, my, my particular thanks to my good friend and ranking member on the Energy Committee, Senator Manchin of West Virginia. He's going to be here on the floor in just a couple minutes uh, to speak as we um, take up this motion to proceed. But from the start of this Congress, he and I have really been focused on modernizing our nation's energy policies, and this bipartisan package that we have assembled will do just that. So again, I credit my ranking member. I also credit the great work um, that both of our teams have brought to this very important national discussion. It has been, it has been uh, a long process, but one where I think members will look critically at the, the package that we have in front of them and, and realize that we have um, worked hard to, to address what more we can be doing to modernize our energy policy. So I've, I've been framing this American Energy Innovation Act in, 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 in two buckets, if you will. Innovation and security. Innovation that includes everything from the renewables to vehicle technologies to carbon capture utilization to efficiencies. And then you have the security side, the security of your supply chain and what that means to make sure that you have access to the minerals that allow you to build out your renewable energy projects, to give you that, that security from a defense perspective. How we ensure that our grids are secure and are modernized. And, and uh, again, secure from the perspective of economic security when we ensure good jobs, good jobs for Americans from Alaska to, to Arkansas. So our bill promotes energy efficiency, renewable energy, energy storage. This is what so many of us have been speaking about for so long. Advanced nuclear, industrial and vehicle technologies, carbon capture, utilization and storage. We, we renew a number of, of broadly supported programs, including weatherization assistance. And in so many of our communities, uh, in our cold states is what we're thinking about right now, but also during the summer months when it is hot, weatherization assistance programs are, are key for so many of, of the people that we work for. We also uh, renew ARPA-E, 
ARPA-E is that innovation hub, if you will, within the Department of Energy that has really helped build out so much of the energy innovation. We've also included timely provisions to strengthen our nation's mineral security and cyber security as we modernize the electric grid and we bolster workforce development. What we have really worked to build are consensus policies that will help this country maintain its status as a global energy leader, and that we are. That we are a global energy leader. But we also want to ensure that we are providing affordable energy, affordable energy for our families, our businesses, and knowing that all of this helps to strengthen our national security and increase our global competitiveness. These policies will also lead to the development of low and zero emissions technologies that will help us address climate change and protect our environment. Now, you're going to have some people who might say, well, this measure doesn't, doesn't solve climate change. You haven't worked to reduce emissions to, to zero. And Mr. President, I will stand before you and, and acknowledge that that is the case. But what we are doing is recognizing that this necessary first step to update, to refresh, to modernize energy policies that haven't seen an upgrade, if you will, in a dozen years, to help incent these technologies that will get us to that cleaner energy future, that will really allow for a level of transition that we seek and that will help protect the environment. So these are the steps that we're taking today to focus on innovation in the energy space and, and security, security of supply, security, economic security through workforce, and security, physical security, when it comes to, to our energy grids. Mr. President, the American Energy Innovation Act is a good bill. You're going to hear me say that a lot this week. It is a good bill. It was developed the right way through regular order, something that we don't see often enough around here, but it's one of those things that the Energy Committee has kind of developed a reputation for using regular order. Well, you're going to see that regular order demonstrated here on the floor. This measure deserves to advance through the legislative process and to become law. We have an opportunity to legislate, to legislate in a meaningful way for the American people. And I think, I think all of us have a little bit of pent-up pent up energy, if you will, to get to legislating. We'll have that opportunity uh, in just a little bit here. I would strongly encourage every member to vote in favor of the motion to proceed to this important legislation. Now, Mr. President, I would ask unanimous consent that the following fellows in my office be granted floor privileges through June 30th, 2020, and that is Robert Ivanoskas, Stephanie Miller, and Heather Booth. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I see that, that my friend, the senator from West Virginia, the ranking member, has come to the floor. I know that he is going to give more extended remarks about the measure, speaking to some of the priorities um, after we uh, complete the vote here in about 15 minutes. Um, on the motion to proceed, I'll have an opportunity to speak more fully about some of the details. But again, I want to repeat, while, while my friend is, is here with me, that uh, this opportunity to really shape legislation in a space that is so needed um, is, is one that he embraced from the minute when he assumed the, the role as ranking member. And, and the two of us have, have said, what is it that we can build? We're not interested in, in messaging. We're not interested in uh, having hearings to have hearings for hearings' sake. We are interested in, in making a difference when it comes to our nation's policy. And I think that we have done that, and we've done it because of a good cooperative process. So I want to thank my colleague, and with that, I yield the floor. 